23rd edition of Hornbill Festival comes to an end on December 10th with the ceremony lighting of the bonfire and unity dance at Kisama, the heritage village. Tourist visitors and locals together partakes in unity dance along with special guests of closing ceremony. Over act of illegal accretion by Mao Council and Manipur government pertaining to land dispute at Kezolsa Saudanangami Public Organization announces its decision to ban Mao citizens from entering Saudanangami areas with effect from December 15, 2022. After Am Admi Party's high big win in MCD elections, the party is preparing to contest at least 25 out of 40 seats in the Mizoram Assembly polls. Ops organizing chairman in Mizoram says party is looking for suitable candidates to nominate for upcoming elections next year. After dethroning BJP in Himachal Pradesh Assembly elections, Congress Legislature Party passes one-line resolution authorizing party high command to decide on new chief minister of Himachal Pradesh. Argentina and Croatia secures a semi-final spot in Qatar World Cup 2022, while Brazil along with Netherlands heads towards home after dramatic penalties. Race for semi-final continues between Morocco and Portugal on Saturday evening. Hello viewers, I Lomika Chumi welcome you all to English Prime Time. Now news in detail. The biggest extravaganza of Nagaland Hornbill Festival came to an end on Saturday with the ceremonial lighting of the bonfire at Main Arena in Kisama village. Chief Minister Nipirio graced the closing ceremony as a special guest, while Judge of Supreme Court of India Sanjay Kishan Kohl was present at the event as a guest of honor. With Advisor of Tourism and Art and Culture H. Khehovi Yaptomi hosting the closing ceremony. Tourists, visitors and locals together partook in the unity dance <coughs> which was held in the evening. Earlier, during the morning session, Deputy Chief Minister Yantong Obatan hosted the morning event while the Director of Ministry of Culture, Deepak Israni, graced the program as the honoured guest in the afternoon session. Furthermore, Minister of Rural Development Metsubo Jamir hosted the afternoon program. It may be noted that, like the previous days, events like craft space, art exhibition and gallery, along with Artist Corner, Imagilan, a pony card ride exhibition and sale of Hanlo Megri and Horti products took place during the last day of the festival.
in our humble land. We also request you to be our ambassador, and we hope to see you next year with many more friends and family. Thank you, Kundalim Jahim, a reality and successful. To all our distinguished guests, invitees, for taking the time out to be here with us on the occasion of the 23rd edition of Corn Mill Festival over the past. The Southern Angami Public Organization held its general body meeting on Wednesday at Sapo Hall, Jakama. The meeting took place regarding Kesalsa and the pending Tenemi People's Organization's court arbitration. The organization after the meeting has announced its decision to ban Mao citizens from entering the Southern Angami areas with effect from December 15. The decision had been taken over the act of illegal aggression by the Mao Council and Manipur government pertaining to land dispute at Kesalsa. The organization also stated that local people own the tribal land and the resources, not the government. The organization further called upon the Mao Council and Manipur government to immediately seize all activities within the disputed land. Sapo also added that it would not tolerate any unwanted acts committed by the Mao Council. Sapo, in a bid to stop further occurrence of undesirable incident in future, decided to restrict the Mao citizens to travel or enter in the southern Angami areas until the case is pending and the misunderstanding is not resolved by the board of arbitrator. The 16 days of activism against gender-based violence organized by the District Administration and Saki One-Stop Center Mokokjong, which commenced on November 25, culminated on Saturday by hosting a panel discussions on the topic Violence Against Women, a Violation Against Human Rights, commemorating the World Human Rights Day. The panel discussion was held at Jungshi Nogdang Hall of Clark Theological College in Mokokjong. During the discussion, the panel talked about violence against women in Nagaland, its causes and forms, while presentation was also presented on violence against women with special reference to the Konyak Nagas and Angami Nagas, respectively. It is to be mentioned that the panel discussion was attended by the students of CTC. reduced to be just an appetite to men. So the two factors met having a patriarchy or patriarchal mindset and gender stereotype. Regular consumption of alcohol by the husband has been strongly associated with poor mental health of the women. Alcohol operates as a situational factor, increasing the likelihood of violence by reducing interpretations, clouding judgment, and impairing an individual's ability to integrate. In India, and also in Nagaland, a husband's ability to provide economically for the family is intimately linked to notions of masculinity, as well as personal and family honor. This is the most common cause of crime in our society. Our uh, introduction, violence against women and girls are an unusual week which knows no boundaries of geography or culture. The universal understanding of violence of women defined as it is against women and girls in many different forms, including domestic violence, sexual assault and harassment, early child marriage and forced marriage, etc. It is rooted in the gender equality that women face throughout their lives from childhood through to all age. In the Konya community, the tradition and culture strictly prohibited the sexual harassment to women and girls. Subsequently, the rape case or murder of women is very rare in the society. In the context of Nagaland, violence against women is always seen from the perspective of the outsider that the causes of violence against women are due to conflict, lack of development, militarization, and all other external factors. But there could be a very narrow understanding of violence against women. The fact that the root cause of this pattern of violence arises from the social, economic, 
Toronto and political skills professor Woody, her life time. Did so much as criminal discrimination has been prevalent in the traditional analysis regime. The same of it was amputated to this day. Most of the practices of this discrimination in the familiar mindset of the male's past have been passed on to the present day. A woman was just reduced to be just an appendage to men. So the two factors meant having a patriarchy or patriarchal mindset and gender stereotype. Regular consumption of alcohol by the husband has been strongly associated with poor mental health of the women. Alcohol operates as a situational factor, increasing the likelihood of violence by reducing interpretations, clouding judgment, and impairing an individual's ability to interpret. In India and also in Nagaland, a husband's ability to provide economically for the family is intimately linked to notions of masculinity as well as personal and family honor. This is the most common cause of crime in our society. Uh, introduction. Violence against women and girls are an arbitrary which, which knows no boundaries of geography or culture. The universal understanding of on the occasion of World Human Rights Day, State Chief Minister Nipirio, along with Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patton on Saturday via Twitter, reiterated their stand towards protecting and valuing human rights. CM Rio via Twitter stated that everyone should work towards protecting and valuing human rights. While on the other hand, Patton stated that everyone should redouble their efforts for a more inclusive world, eliminating prejudice, celebrating diversity and fostering equal opportunities for all. As the assembly polls of the state is almost around the corner, NLTV on Saturday visited Naga People France Minority Wing Central President Bishnu Bhattacharji, where he discussed the various topics related to minorities and upcoming 2023 elections. On asking about the issue which they will address during the campaign, Bhattacharji stated that NPF is a party for the people and will always work for them. He further mentioned that their main focus is to establish good universities in the state. He further mentioned that the party has always been open to every religion and will also work for everyone despite the religion as they believe in inclusiveness. NPF laga heart, NPF laga bhavna, manu laga monte ase. As you know, it started in 1963 and it's a long years. It's a uh, struggle. The NPF is not like natural. rule At the heart of Naga people. Ministry is NPF. We know it. Our election is a time. Opposition is a time. So, NPF is a party that cannot betray Naga people. The NPF is a party. It's the party for the people, of the people, and by the people of Nagaland. So, Manulaga is a party. It's a manifesto means that it's a man. It's a manifesto. It's a manifesto. It's a manifesto. Manifesto ko bhavna kora to alaga se. NPF to mon pura hai ki bhavna public ne mite itu hai metaila manifesto ase. Our Dr. Shrijale, President, taay to beshi particular ase. Taay ki koi itu kore nega ase na. Man of word ase. Hikali Achubi from Zinaboda District has been crowned Miss Nagaland 2022 on Friday night at an event held at Capital Cultural Hall in Kohima. Kenneret Se from Peck secured a first runners-up position, whereas Jantiran Jamir from Mokokchong finishes in the third position. The winner will also be the systematic voters education and electoral participation icon under the chief electoral office and took home a cash prize of rupees of 1 lakh along with gift hampers. The second and third position winners received rupees 70,000 and rupees 50,000 respectively along with the gift hampers. 
and would also be SVEEP state election icons. The judges for the event were Irene Dakar, Miss Nortis 2022 and Miss Meghalaya 2022, Ishani Hatimura, Miss Nortis 2022, first runners-up and Miss Assam 2022. The popular event was organized by the Beauty and Aesthetic Society of Nagaland, powered by the Department of Tourism and supported by Chief Electoral Office Nagaland. The Zemi Baptist Church Council Youth Department's Kingdom Search Sports 2022 concluded on Friday at Jaloki Town. The Executive Secretary ZBCC, Reverend Zaitu Lung Thering, was the special guest during the closing ceremony, whereas a total of 69 churches participated in the four-day sports meet. Mibalwa Achuiki went home as the champions with 18 medals, followed by Piran Chukyu and Jaloki Chukyu on second and third position. Revan, while addressing the audience, stated that patience and hard work leads to gold in life. Revan also warned the participants about the unhealthy lifestyles and substance abuse. The five-day event was organized in order to encourage the youths towards living a healthy life in all areas of life. The Jalokilo village under Piren district organized its 25th Silver Jubilee at the village ground on Friday, while being recognized by the state government in 2005 only. The president of Jaloki Valley Youth Organization, Masangam Heka, graced the celebration as special guest who also unveiled the Jubilee stone along with the souvenir. Heka in a speech encouraged the locals as well as the leaders to remember the sacrifices of the pioneers which would be necessary in the road towards progress. The celebration also included a short speech by Hat Gaumbura, Savizo Hoshi, followed by indigenous folk songs performance by Ziliang and Chakasang tribes. A massive fire broke out in Assam on Friday where properties worth several lakh of rupees and many houses were gutted in the fire. The incident took place in a slum area of Fata Sil Ambari where at least 12 cylinders exploded which caused a huge damage. Firefighters rushed to the spot and no casualties were reported from the incident. The party is all set to contest in at least 25 out of the 40 seats in the Mizoram Assembly polls, which is slated to take place next year. The party is organizing chairman in Mizoram, Andrew Lalremkima, stated that the party is on a hunt for suitable candidates that it could nominate for the upcoming elections. He also pointed out that the Arvind Kejriwal led party, which is just 10 years old, has secured the status of a national party after securing five seats and nearly 13% vote share in the recently concluded Gujarat Assembly polls. Furthermore, senior Mizoram AAP leaders say that a top party leaders from Delhi will campaign in Mizoram next year for the elections. Meghalaya government is going to organize the third edition of the popular Winter Tail Fest at Shillong's iconic Wards Lake from December 19 to 21. The fest will be implemented by the Meghalayan Age Limited and to be curated by Adakti Craft as the previous edition of the festival was very successful. The Winter Tales Fest is an artisan's event which provides a platform to the entrepreneurs, arts and craft communities of the state to exhibit their talent. This year's edition will also focus on sustainability, whereas the goal is to make it a zero-waste initiative.
The Arunachal Pradesh Public Service Commission of Fiasco continues as the Central Bureau of Investigation on Thursday filed a charge sheet against 10 accused persons in connection to the question paper leakage scandal. The charge sheet was filed by the agency in the Court of Special Judges in Arunachal's Itanagar. Notably, the Central Agency took over the case on October 27 following intense protests by all Arunachal Pradesh students along with Nyashi Students' Union. Furthermore, the scandal first came into light after a candidate of the APPSC Assistant Engineer Examination filed a police complaint on August 29 regarding the leakage. Since the complaint, the case was first investigated by the Capitol Police but was later transferred to the Special Investigation Cell. A total of 10 persons have been arrested so far in the case and more names are likely to surface in near future. Tripura Chief Minister Dr. Manik Saha on Friday inaugurated the first state-level Sheri Samridhi Utsav at Agatala's uh, Kushi Rambasu English Medium School Ground. The state-level event was organized by Tripura Urban Livelihood Mission and aims at facilitating the access of the self-help groups to various government schemes. CM Saha, while addressing the gathering, stated that Tripura is holding the third position in the country in terms of internet strength. Tripura CM further added that the SHG movement has been playing an important role in changing the socio-economic condition of the women across the state. Furthermore, a number of self-help groups from 20 urban areas participated in the Utsaf, which will continue till December 13. A faculty member of the Indian Institute of Technology in Guwahati reportedly commuted suicide in his room on Friday night. Reportedly, the professor was found hanging inside his room in faculty quarters in Assam's North Guwahati area. Notably, the deceased, identified as Samir Kamal, hailed from Delhi. According to local police on Friday evening, police received information from IIT Guwahati that a foul smell was coming out from locked Faculty Quarter D022, following which the police rushed to the spot immediately. Meanwhile, the police recovered the body and sent the body for post-mortem in the presence of the magistrate, while reports are awaited. After dethroning the Bharatiya Janata Party in Himachal Pradesh Assembly elections, the Congress Legislature Party on Friday passed a one-line resolution authorizing the party high command to decide on the new Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh. With the Congress wrestling power in the Hill State by begging 40 seats in the 68-seat Assembly on Friday, a CLP meet was held at the office in Shimla to discuss the appointment of the new CM. Notably, at least three members of the party have staked claim for the CM post, including State Party President Pratibha Singh, former party chief Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu and outgoing CLP leader Mukesh Agnihotri. Eight-year-old Tanmay Sahu, who fell in a borewell in Madhya Pradesh's Bitul on December 6, died after he was pulled out on Saturday. As per Bitul District Administration, the child was taken to Bitul District Hospital by ambulance, where he was declared death. Meanwhile, condoling the incident, Chief Minister of MP Shivraj Singh Chauhan announced the compensation of Rs 4 lakh to the Bevered family. Reportedly, the incident took place on Tuesday evening in Madhve village of the Atner police station near when the child got trapped 
in a 55 feet deep borewell, which according to the family was dug in the field recently. It may be noted that the staff disaster response force, home guard and local police personnel were on the job over the past four days to rescue the child. But despite massive efforts, the boy could not be saved. <clears throat> Ushering in a new era in country's sports administration, the legendary P.T. Usha was on Saturday elected as the first women president of Indian Olympic Association. Notably, the 58-year-old is a multiple Asian Games gold medalist and fourth place finisher in the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics 400-meter hurdles final. It is to be mentioned that Usha was declared elected unopposed for the top polls in the polls. It may be noted that the elections were held under the supervision of the Supreme Court appointed retired SC Judge L. Nageshwara Rao. A low intensity blast was reported at Tran Taran police station in Punjab on Saturday morning. A spur of prima facie evidence collected from the spot. The blast occurred after a rocket propelled grenade hit the police station. According to a police official, the forensic team is collecting more evidence from the spot and ascertaining the cause behind the blast. Meanwhile, the alleged RPG attack started a political storm in Punjab, lashing out at the ruling Amatmi party. BJB MLA Raj Kumar Verka stated, that Punjab is not being run by Punjab government, but run by Arvind Kejriwal from Delhi. Lion Rider का जनाजा निकला पड़ा है। आज तरंतरं के सरहाली में जैसे RPG attack हुआ है, ये दर्शाता है। कि पंजाब सुरक्षित नहीं है पंजाब सुरक्षित हाथों में नहीं है और पंजाब की सरकार लॉ ऑर्डर लेकर गंभीर नहीं है लॉ ऑर्डर में सरकार फेल है और मैं बेनती करूंगा पंजाब के राज्यपाल से कि इस पे सख्त नोटिस ले सरकार को हदायत जारी करे कि सरकार इधर-उधर घूमने की बजाय पंजाब का ध्यान रखे सरकार को पंजाब का ध्यान नहीं सरकार को केतरीवाल का ध्यान है और दिल्ली में बैठे हुए केतरीवाल लाइनर को चला रहे हैं इसलिए लाइनर फेल हो रहा है Proud moment for India as a 13-year-old Indian sailor Anandi Nandan Chandavarkar from Mumbai back to gold at Asia's most prestigious 34th King's Cup Regatta 2022 in the overall open skiff category on Saturday. The one-week event took place in Thailand where Anandi has been sailing in the open skiff category for a couple of years and has won many laurels at the international events. Furthermore, three participants represented Team India at the King's Cup in Phuket, where Anandi clinched the gold. Love Asakpal ranked fifth overall and Arman Malhotra ranked twelfth. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is scheduled to visit Maharashtra and Goa for a slew of programs on Sunday. Modi will inaugurate Phase 1 of Samrudhi Mahamark covering a distance of 520 kilometers and connecting Nagpur and Sridi. Furthermore, he will also inaugurate IM's Nagpur Vande Bharat train and will flag off two metro trains at Kapri metro station. Notably, to boost connectivity in the country, he will also inaugurate the Mopa International Airport in Goa on Sunday. Another day, another poor air quality in the national capital as the AQI stood at a 337 and remained in the very poor category on Saturday. Areas near Delhi University witnessed an AQI of 316, while the National Capital Region Noida's air quality moved to severe category with an AQI of 448, 
and Gurugram's AQI stood at 304 under the very poor category as well. The road to Qatar World Cup 2022 semi-finals is being short but hot, full of excitements, thrills, disappointments and also sadness. In the second quarter final encounter on Saturday, Lionel Messi's Argentina defeated the Netherlands 3-4 in penalties and secures a place in the semi-finals. Messi has now equalized Gabriel Batistuta with 94 goals, highest for Argentina. In the other match, 2018 World Cup finalist Croatia went past through Brazil 4-2 in the penalties and enters semi-finals. Croatia's goalie Dominic showed a masterclass performance by saving crucial penalty shot from Rodrigo, while Marquinhos also missing the fourth shot. The heartbreaking loss for the South Americans will be hard one to take as the World Cup trophy drought will be extended to further 24 years. Meanwhile, Morocco against the Portugal match underway, while England will play against France on Sunday after a semi-final spot. There viewers, that's all we have for today. Keep watching Nagaland TV. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter. And Kohima and Mokopchong viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital.